Hey there, uh, this is Andrea Balboni, Sex, Love, and Relationships Coach, and I'm here today with Nikki Hodgson. Hi. Hey, Nikki. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> <laughs> and Nikki is a freelance journalist. She's fantastic and amazing. If you haven't read her work, she writes on sex and relationships. She's also been a dominatrix, and she is um, has worked for the dating industry as well. So some of the people that she writes for, some of the publications she writes for, are The Guardian, The Telegraph, The Times. She also broadcasts with the BBC, BBC Three, and um, Sky News. She's also on BBC Radio and has written a few books, which I will uh, put in the comments so you can check them out. They're fantastic. And also has done some documentaries. She's done loads, basically. <laughs> she is a pro. And I am so pleased to have her here today to talk about uh, sex, love, and relationships with us. Thank you so much for coming. Fantastic. So um, we were talking a little bit before uh, before we came on also about consent and how mm. it's really related, this, this uh, thing of connection and fostering connection and consent. And yeah. also um, what consent really means in maybe different words or in a different way of thinking about it that might feel more understandable for people and just easier for people to practice yeah. um, for themselves and then when they're with someone and mm. just know how to how to practice how to articulate how to how to live in um in a new place that we are with consent boundaries and yeah, yeah if you could talk to that a bit yeah, so I think consent's tricky for people because they tend to have a very legal definition in their mind of what that is, mm -hmm. and they sort of think it's an act that they agree to doing, and then they do it, and then everything's fine, and it doesn't work like that. Consent is really about um, deciding you do want to do something, and it might have just been brought to your attention a few seconds ago, mm -hmm. so it might, might not be a huge pre-plan, and then listening to your body and to your mind and to your values and deciding that you do want to go ahead with it. Mm -hmm. Now, we all make hundreds of decisions to consent to lots of tiny things every day. So we're actually very good at consenting. Mm -hmm. But what we're not so good at doing is tuning in to the points where we feel and oh, maybe we don't want to consent to that. And, you know, that's a product of, again, of capitalism, of living in a world where we have to just kind of go along with a lot of things during our working day. We mm -hmm. get very much into the habit of not listening to what our bodies and our minds want mm -hmm. in connection. So I think when you want to think about consent, it really is the opposite of connection. So when you're fully connected with someone, you're both in the moment together and you're going on that journey together. Um, if you're not consenting, then you're divided from them. You're, you're at the other end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. So I think what's really important is that if you're in an intimate moment with someone and they are giving you non-verbal cues that they are not willing mm -hmm. in that moment, so either like their eyes are completely averted Maybe they're completely still, frozen. Um, maybe they're looking off into space and giving you no indication that they're enjoying what's happening to them or that they're a participant in it. If you get to that stage and that person is not consenting anymore, mm -hmm. and they may they may not be aware of it themselves, that's why it's so tricky. Mm -hmm. But if you ever have a person kind of freeze out on you, you need to check in with them. Mm -hmm. So, what words would you use, or what might you ask them in order to check in? I think the best thing you can say to anyone, and this is a phrase that you can use for so many things when you're having sex with somebody, is just, how is this feeling for you? How are you doing? How is this going for you? Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? Mm -hmm. How are you feeling is better, because how are you doing can sound a bit intrusive if you think somebody's really unhappy and they're not just going to say, and, and they're not going to immediately come out with, I'm not good, I'm not doing well. Yeah. But how is this feeling for you is useful, because if somebody just goes fine, like very off the cuff, probably not fine. Mm -hmm. You want to ask a few more questions and yeah. you want to say curious you want to say calm uh, you don't want to get angry or upset with them mm. be curious about what is happening for them in that moment yeah. and if you keep that in your mind if that's the mentality you have then you're going to go there with understanding and care mm. and you're probably going to get the good answer mm. or the real answer anyway yeah. so yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, how is this feeling is a great question and not taking it personally so really not taking it not personally in a good space yeah and just not having that be any reflection on you yeah. um, because you don't know what's going on with them. You don't. And they may not feel exactly. safe or ready to share with you everything. Completely. I think anybody that's ever had any kind of sexual or emotional trauma, they will have pain points which they don't necessarily know are coming when mm -hmm. they're in a kind of dynamic with you. So they'll have a memory of something that makes them really unhappy or maybe something somebody did that was not pleasant. 
And they could just have a flashback, for example. I, it might not be the act that they did that time that's triggering it. It could just be a brush of an arm somehow, and for some reason the brain brings up a memory of mm-hmm. the thing that they didn't enjoy. Yeah. And then they have a freeze, or they have a, you know, they can feel their body retracting. Yeah. So it's important to, to do this asking because, like I said, they might, might not be that conscious themselves of what's going on. But mm-hmm. if you ask the question, they're going to have to, or the check-in with themselves as mm-hmm. well as with you. Mm-hmm. And the same thing um, I think you were mentioning before is uh, also for yourself when yeah. you have perhaps consented or um, had drawn uh, a line and said, okay, we'll do this, this, and this, and I'm happy with that. Or maybe you've said it to yourself. Yeah. And then um, all of a sudden you're in a situation where mm-hmm. things that you had thought were going to be okay all of a sudden aren't anymore feeling okay. Yeah. You may not understand why, Um However, all of a sudden, your body is telling you. Uh, yeah. So, how can someone once they, I guess, uh, how can someone realize once that they've crossed their own line, yeah. drawn boundaries? How can they understand? Actually, I said yes, but I'm not feeling okay about this anymore. How can I now um, communicate to this person that actually it's not? I'm not okay anymore. Yeah, that's a really good one, and it happens to all of us at some point, especially when it's with somebody new. And maybe they've slightly misread something that we said that we were cool with and then maybe we're not so cool with it. Or they've gone a bit too far with something mm. or touched it in a way that just doesn't feel right for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, again, it, the being gentle is good, but you need to be firmer for yourself in this situation when mm-hmm. you're on this side of the dynamic. And I think you can just say something like, hey, couldn't you take a minute? Always important, like always easy to say. Yeah. Um, just buy yourself some time. If you feel like you don't have to, to tell a lie but if you feel like going to the bathroom would help you to get a bit of space and to think about what just went on for me where do I want to go next with this Mm -hmm. as in am I finished now like I don't want to do any more today or do I just need to kind of sit or do I just need to get out of that position like whatever it is yeah so I think it's always worth you know if you you feel if you're a kind of person that doesn't like to um embarrass the other person that's what you're thinking you're not going to by the way but if in your mind you sort of think or I need a bit of a kind of easy exit. Just say that you need to go to the bathroom for a moment. Gather mm-hmm. your thoughts. But when you come in, it's better to be real about what's been going on. Yeah. So you want to say something like, hey, I'm, ha- I'm having a great time with you, if you are, not if you're not. <laughs> I'm having a great time with you, but I wasn't so comfortable with what we were just doing. Could we, you know, regroup? Could we do something else instead? Mm. Like, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Or, and if you if you think that saying, can we do something else, might be a bit freezing for them, mm-hmm. then suggest something that you would rather do. Mm. Could we do X instead? Yeah. yeah. Or could, and if that's difficult, if the words are difficult, then you could take somebody's hand and put somebody's hand on your body where it feels good to be touched. Mm. So that can be a way of kind of re-engaging them in a way that's, you know, you're not telling them that they're the problem, you're just saying that thing that you're doing is not so great. Mm. And then helping them navigate exactly. to the thing that feels good for you. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. Sounds yeah. great. Cool. <laughs> okay. 